Welcome. Today I'm going to work on a project to give my house a little bit of acelift, boost the curb appeal. When I moved in, there were these uh, kind of aged gold numbers, and uh, they're showing their age, kind of starting to get old. So I'm going to replace these guys with this. So here's a board that I have, a piece of maple that I cut out of some firewood that I repurposed. And I want to frame that with some stainless steel, like a stainless steel frame. Couldn't find a frame that would work, that looked right, but I did find this. This is just a kick plate for a door. They sell these at hardware stores, pretty easy to find. So gonna try and use that and just bend it around and form a frame. That could be a little bit tricky, so it might not work. We'll see how it goes. Well, it certainly cuts easily, which is probably a bad thing because it probably means that this is not actually stainless steel. It probably means this is aluminum that's covered in a stainless steel coating or skin or something. It's about a week later. And one thing that I've learned is that when you're making something, especially if you're making something that you haven't tried before, you're going to fail. So last time you saw me, I was working on making this kick plate into like a stainless steel frame. That failed terribly because the kick plate was just aluminum and it just really was not going to hold up or even look very good because it was just aluminum with some kind of coating to make it look like stainless steel. So I have a stainless steel bar that's actual solid stainless steel, one eighth inch thick, which will be perfect, It'll be really beautiful, uh, and it will be durable. Um, it's not going to rust like some kind of coated aluminum will. So that's going to be crucial. I do only have just barely enough though, so got to be really careful when I measure this out and cut it. Okay, I've already made a mistake. I stayed in one place too long and I've and I've managed to burn and discolor that tip. Hopefully I can just sand that off because it is, after all, pretty beefy, solid stainless steel. Not too worried. But yeah, whoops. Okay, I have my hand-hewn slab of spalted maple right here. And it took quite a bit of work, but my stainless steel frame is ready to go carefully cutting and grinding it to shape um, and then to get this finish on here I sanded it with uh, with an 80 grit sandpaper I actually used a belt grinder to make it go a little bit faster so that gets that smooth finish where the undersides kind of dull originally because this was just kind of plain stainless steel with no finish. So now that gets that kind of brushed nickel look to it. So I think that looks good. It's time to put it together. We are definitely getting somewhere. So that looks like a pretty solid frame. It's definitely going to last, it won't ever rust, finish won't ever wear off because it's solid stainless steel. So I have confidence in this. Now to put the letters on. We're going to start working on the backlighting for the letters. Now my plan is, and hopefully this goes better than the stainless steel frame, now my plan is to take these tiny little LED lights, these are called fairy lights sometimes, or LED small dot lights in this package. Uh, they're cheap, really tiny little lights. My plan is to kind of embed these behind the numbers. But first, we got to remove this battery-operated Q 
cube here and power it with something that I can plug in because I'm certainly not changing the batteries on my front porch light. All right, fairly confident this should work. These are three AAA batteries. They're probably run in series. Each AAA battery is one and a half volts. So one and a half, three, four and a half volts total. So this is running at four and a half volts. USB plugs run at five volts. That's probably close enough. So we're gonna clip this off. Ah uh, yes, now the age old question. Which of these wires are the power wires? I don't know. Red and black maybe? Probably, they seem a little bit thicker than the white and the green wire. So I'm guessing the red and black wires are gonna be the wires that hold the voltage on this USB plug. I have a multimeter. I'm gonna switch this over to DC. And I'm gonna try not to electrocute myself or anything else. What I wanna do here is I wanna confirm that these two wires are actually the correct ones the way that I think they are. Five volts DC should be fairly safe. And yeah, that's coming out to 5.1 volts. So I feel good about that. So now we just gotta match these guys up and hope it works. Which of course it doesn't. Hey, there we go. That's the winning combo. So, proof of concept wise, that seems like it'll work perfectly fine. Uh, bypasses the battery pack. When this is powered, they'll just turn on, which is exactly what I want. All right, so now that we've proved that we can connect these to a uh, plug-in power source, uh, I started kind of tucking them into the actual letters. So these letters that I bought at a hardware store, they look like this, super sharp. On the back though, there's actually like a hollowed out space. So I'm just going to slide it in there. Should be, should be pretty slick. Um, the lights themselves though, if you take a look at them, they have an LED here and an LED here yeah. and a big wire space so obviously I don't want one light there and one there right okay. yeah. hi dude so I've been kind of curling them around to get these LEDs yeah. tucked yeah. really close together yep is that right yeah. so I've been curling them around a straw to get these LEDs all compactly together so that I've got like kind of a continuous light source behind this number. Now that I have this coiled, I'm just gonna kind of tuck this in to the number to, just to test fit it. All right, so I have ultra clear silicone. The idea here is if it gets a little bit over the LEDs, um, it won't block the light. But my plan is to just put a thin bead down here. It won't need that much to stick it in place. It's basically wedged in place anyway. So it really just needs to be held from falling out. And I really don't want it held so solidly that if one of these LED strands breaks I can't rip it out so I think the silicone will give me kind of a a mild bond to where I can pull it out if need be all right so these numbers came with paper templates which is nice I've taped them in the position after carefully measuring where I want them and they mark the screw holes I'm gonna use uh, a small punch to kind of mark 
the dead center of each. I'm doing that because if you try and just drill them, the drill can kind of walk and you might not get perfectly in the center of where you want to get. Once I finished drilling the holes to mount the numbers, I just drilled a couple additional holes to feed the power wires through, and then I'm going to wrap them all up on the back side and hook them to my power supply. Okay, we are done. I think it looks pretty good on the wall here, and I think it looks even better at night. Anyway, thanks for joining me. It's been a fun little project. I've actually hid an outlet back here behind it uh, for those of you who are curious about how the lighting works that outlet turns on and off on an automated schedule so it turns on at dusk and turns off kind of late at night so it's kind of lit, lit up when people might be looking for my house and that's about it anyway thanks for joining and i'll see you around